Hi, guys. Welcome back to NCIC Fellowship Bible Study. As always, I never take it for granted that you are here. I bless the Lord for your presence. I thank God that you took the time to come back to study the word of God. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's lesson. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and share. If you like the content, don't forget to share this with a friend because we come together to study the word of God to show ourselves approved. This is the thing that we must do. One of the problems that's going on right now within the body of Christ and Christians is biblical illiteracy. Everybody wants to be fed and spoon fed. Everybody is itching to hear a sermon. They want someone to just tell them things, but we as children of God have to live purposeful. We have to be intentional. We have to study the word and know for ourselves, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to teach us so that we don't get led astray and be bamboozled. So that we just don't click on the YouTube and turn and watch anything and be led astray and don't know any better because we don't know what the word of God says. Well, this is why we are here to study the word of God. So I thank you so much for your time and your attention. Without further ado, I'm going to pray and ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit before we go into our lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you and we invite your presence of your Holy Spirit to come. Come, open up our hearts and our minds to teach us your truth, your way, your word, Father God, that we will get that word down in our heart, that we will not sin against you, that we will have that word in our hearts, that we will show ourselves approved. Father, you say that we, your people perish for a lack of knowledge, but Father, we come to you seeking your knowledge in your word. We seek you in learning your word. So come Holy Spirit, teach us and guide us into all truth and righteousness. It is in Jesus name I pray, amen. Okay, guys, remember we started our new series on the spirit of uh, the ites. That's right. The seven nations that Joshua had to battle to get into the promised land. These were the seven enemies of Israel. The spirits that's attached to these nations that still exist today. This is why we are doing this study, because we are learning the characteristics of the spirits that were attached to those seven evil nations. So we're exploring these evil spirits that have been holding God's people back from entering into their own personal promised land and getting all that Elohim has promised us. Joshua and the children of Israel, they had a physical battle to fight. And God provided them victory. But they still, nevertheless, they had to fight and they had to conquer these nations. Well, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to do the same thing. But our battle is not a physical battle, it's spiritual. Paul said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. So therefore, our battle may not be physically against these nations, but it's spiritually against the spirits that are attached to these nations that still exist today. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll get into the lesson. I'm going to do a quick recap on the past two weeks, just in case this is your first time here and you missed the last two lessons. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, guys, can everybody see the screen? All right, I thank everybody for their patience. Bless the Lord. We are studying the Hivite spirits. Our scripture verse is taken from 2 Corinthians 4, 18. For we do not look at the things that are seen. For the things that are seen, they're temporary. But the things that are not seen are eternal. And this, my friend, is what we must fix our eyes on the things that are eternal. We must not have a limited vision and only see the things that are in front of us. For we live by faith and not by sight. So let's do a quick recap. 
the Canaanite spirit, that was the spirit of greed and sexual perversion, the spirit of idolatry and the lust for accumulation for earthly and material wealth. And then there's the, the Hittite spirit, what we studied last week. The Hittite spirit was a spirit of terror, fear, confusion to keep you trapped in mental bondage. Remember, this is a spirit that is directly responsible for suicide and suicidal ideation. So some of these nations have very distinct evil characteristics, while others have similar characteristics. The Hivites share similar characteristics with the Perizzites. And um, so today we're going to study both the Hivites and the Perizzites. So let's jump straight into our lesson. The Hivites, Hebrew, Hathim. These were a group of descendants of Canaan, the son of Ham, according to Genesis. Hivite was the sixth son of Canaan. So let's go to Genesis 10 and read 15 through 7. Okay, let's go to Genesis 10. 15, and it says, Genesis 10, 15. Okay, and it reads, Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, the Jebusite, the Amorites, and the Gergesites, the Hevites, the Archites, and the Sinites. So you see, Hevite was the sixth son of Canaan. Hevite had four cities. They were comprised of four cities. The Hevites had the, the Gibeons, the, the Chephiras, the Beeroth, and the Kerjath Jerem nations. These inhabitants were called the were from Gibeon, were called the Gibeonites before the conquest. They were all Havites. Okay. So Joshua made an oath with them and later ordered the Havites of Gibeonites to be woodcutters and water carriers for the temple of Yahweh. Why did this happen? Why did they not get destroyed with the rest of the Israelites? So let's go ahead and start reading. Let's go to the book of Joshua and go to chapter nine. Joshua chapter nine, and we're going to start at verse three. And it reads, but when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they were craftily and went and pretended to be ambassadors, okay? They took old staff cups from their donkeys, old wineskins, they tore and mended, old patches and sandals on their feet, old garments on themselves, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And then they went to Joshua, to the camp of Gilgal, and they said to the men of Israel, we have come from a far country. Now, therefore, make with us a covenant. And the men of Israel, Israel, said to the Hevites, perhaps you, you can dwell amongst us. Hey, maybe you can stay here among us, okay? So let's continue reading. And then Joshua, and but then they said to Joshua, we are your servants. And Joshua said to them, who are you and where did you come from? So they said to him from a far country, your servant has come because of the name of the Lord, your God. We have heard of his fame and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites beyond the river Jordan, beyond Jordan and the Sidon, the king of Heshbon and Og, the king of Bashan, who was at Ashtoreth. So they heard what happened, how Joshua we got the battle, um, defeated the battle of Jericho and what he did to Ai and the Amorite kings. And so they pretended to be poor and needy and that they came from a far country in order to make an oath with Joshua and the children of Israel. So they were being deceptive. Okay, so now let's go down to verse 17 and be 17 through 19. It says, then the children of Israel journeyed and came to the, the third on the third day, came to their city. Okay. Their city, remember, was Gibe Gibeon, um, Chephira, Beeroth, and Kerjath Jerem. But the children of Israel did not attack them because the ruler of that congregation had swore to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and all the congregation. Um, they complained against the rulers. And then the ruler said to all the congregation, we have sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. Now, therefore, we may not touch them. 
we, we it, this we will do to them. We will let them live. At least the wrath of God be upon us for the oath that we swore. But then look at what Joshua says. Let's go down to 22. And then Joshua had called them and he spoke to them saying, why have you, why have you deceived us saying that we, that you are from a very, very far, that you were from very far. And when you really dwell right here near us, there now, therefore, are you cursed and none of you shall be free from being slaves and woodcutters and water carriers in the house of God. So that is how the Hivites, known as the Gibeonites, end up becoming woodcutters and water carriers for the house of God because of their deception. So the Hivites were deceptive. They were willing to make trickery in, in order to get what they wanted. See, they had this mentality of whatever feels good, do it. Don't worry about what other people think. Okay, let's look out for number one type of mentality. Well, you see what that got them. Their deception led them to be cursed and by Joshua to be slaves and servants of the Israelites and of God's temple. The Hivites, these were villagers, okay? They lived in lowland and villages. They, had, they were limited to enjoying earthly inheritance known as hedoism. Hedoism is the pursuit of pleasure where you only seek earthly things. You only seek after the things that you see right in front of you. In the natural sense, it's thinking of this world, just thinking of this world only, okay? Deceitful plans on how to get over or how to get a come up in this life only. In the spiritual sense, this means the inability to see eternal value in limited, you have a limited vision eternally. This spirit will cause you not only to care about the the living your best life now, you will have a tunnel vision. The possibilities um, that you have in the Lord, you won't even see these possibilities in the Lord. You will spin your wheels around trying to figure out ways to get ahead in this world because you have such a limited vision. Your eternal, your, your life eternally with the Lord, your rewards that is stored up in heaven, you won't even look to those things. You'll only be looking at earthly things. This is what this spirit will make you do. This spirit will cause you to have also a deceitful heart. Jesus tells us in Matthew not to store up your treasures on earth, that where your treasures are, your heart will be also. And he also said that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So let's go ahead and read Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 19 to 21. It says, lay not up for yourself, okay, the treasures that are on this earth. For where your treasures are, your heart will be also. The Hivites, they only saw life right in front of them. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says the, the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit. The Hivites only wanted what was right now. In Proverbs 29.18, it says, where there is no vision, my people, where my people will perish. Okay. The Hivites, they will only, they only saw just their vision right here. This spirit will cause you to have a, a block. It will block your spiritual vision. Proverbs 6, 18 says, the heart that devises wicked imagination. The Hivites were deceptive, but it backfired on them. So now my friend, let's talk about the Perizzite spirit. Since we were so anxious to get to the Perizzite spirit, the Perizzite spirit, the Perizzites, like all the other nations, were descendants of Abram. They were a nation um, that 
dwell in the land of milk and honey, that promised land. They enjoy, they join forces with all the other, all the six other evil nations against Joshua and the children of Israel, the, um, the Israelites. So the meaning of uh, the Perizzites is unprotected, unwalled village. The Perizzite spirit will cause you to have an unguarded opening to your life. You will have no walls of protection, causing it causing you to be vulnerable to the evils that seek to destroy you at your unguarded moments. The Perizzite spirits, let's go ahead and read. Let's go to Genesis 15 and read 18 through 20. And it reads, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying to your descendants, I have given you this land from the river Egypt to the river, to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Rephams, the Amorites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gergesites, and the Jebusites. So now let's go to Joshua 9, 1 and 2. And it reads, and it came to pass that when all the kings who were on the side of Jordan and the hill of the lowlands and all the coast of the great sea towards Lebanon, the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, they all heard about it and they gathered together to fight Joshua and Israel in one accord. So now let's go to Exodus 3, 8. And it reads, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians to bring them up from the land of a good and large land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So you see, there were a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. So now let's go to drop down to, let's go to Exodus 23. And let's read 23 and 24. And it reads, for, the, for my angel will go before you and bring you to the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, and the Hivites, the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. So the Perizzites belonging to a village with limited vision, they were, had low self-esteem. The Perizzites would, uh, has a spirit of inferiority, stagnation, producing generation, a lack of literal spiritual and physical poverty. So what does this mean? This spirit will be a stumbling block for understanding. It makes you feel worthless or make you feel sorry for yourself so that you will be an underachiever. The, do you find yourself sometimes trusting everyone and opening up to the wrong things or to the wrong people, looking at other people for affirmation? This causes a lot of damage. When you have this open, unwalled mind, this free-spirited person with no boundaries. This is a characteristic of the Perizzite spirit. The Perizzite spirit. Let's talk about some warnings for this spirit, okay? Like, let's read Ezekiel 38, 10 and 11. Let's go to Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiah.
and it reads, thus says the Lord God on the, that day, it shall come to pass that the thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up. I will go up against a land of unwalled village. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having them neither bars nor gates. So Joshua was warning the Israelites that Israelites that when they went into that land, not to let their spirit go unguarded and be vulnerable to its wickedness that was in that land. Because it was like having unwalled gates. So let's read Proverbs 25 and 28. Turn with me to Proverbs 25. And verse 28, and it reads, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. If you don't have rule over your own spirit, see, the enemy comes when you are mad and frustrated and when you're temperamental and you, you, you get out of control. This Parisi spirit will slide right in and take over and destroy even good intentions. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. Take you to 1 Peter chapter 5 and let's read verse 8. And it says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, he walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We have to be sober and be vigilant. We cannot have a limited vision. We cannot be unguarded. The devil is always lurking and waiting for our unguarded moments. So the Hivites and the Perizzites, they both had limited vision. The Hivites were deceitful and they only cared about the right now earthly pleasures and trapping them in bondage, living their best life now any way possible, even by deceit. The Perizzite spirit, it harbors this low self-esteem. It, it will cause you to be unguarded. Vulnerability and trapping you into physical and a spiritual box, causing a lack of achievement in your physical walk in life and also in your spiritual growth and your uh, faith walk, leading you into an ambush of evil snare. Remember, these nations that Joshua and the Israelite had to conquer, we too have to conquer these spiritual giants that hinder us from trying to enter into what God has given us and what God has up, stored up for us. So we have to keep these things in mind as we are, have learned about these spiritual giants that we won't be trapped. Because this is the whole reason why we are learning. So we will understand why do we do the things that we do? Why do we think the way that we think? What causes us to do that? Well, these evil spirits that still exist today, they still work within us. We have to examine ourselves to see, are we under the influence of, of the Parisi spirit? Do we have a low self-esteem? Are we underachievers? Do we have spiritual poverty? Are we deceitful? Do we only care about what happens right now? Are we under attack of the Hevite spirit? This is what we need to think about, my friends, as we are learning about these seven evil giants. 
So in closing, I want you guys to be encouraged. As I leave you with the word of God, that God told the Israelites, he said, hear, O Israel, you are approaching the battle against your enemy today. Do not be afraid. Do not be faint hearted. Do not be afraid. Don't panic or tremble before you. For the Lord your God is with you. And he who will be with you to fight for you against your enemies. He will save you. We thank God that the word tells us that God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. This is what I want to leave you guys with as we are learning about these giants, these evil spirits. Because the one thing that God kept telling Joshua, every nation that he had to conquer is to do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. I will fight your battles for you. I will give them over to you. God is with you. When we come up with these spiritual battles that we have to fight, you know what we must do. You know who we must turn to. We must run to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. We must plead the blood of Jesus. We must fight our, the spiritual battle and fight, fight the good fight. We can conquer these nations. Just like Joshua conquered those nations, we can conquer these spirits. The first thing that we're doing is learning the characteristics so that we will no longer be entrapped by these evil spirits. I thank you guys for this time. I pray that this helped you. I hope you have understanding. Please go and read Joshua chapter nine. Pull the lesson back up and read for yourself. Study to show yourself approved. Share the word with someone else. And if you like it, come back next week. Bring a friend. We have Bible study on Zoom every Sabbath, every Saturday at 6 p.m. Leave your email address in the comment section and I'll email you. Guys, I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe. I thank you. Shabbat Shalom. See you next time, my friends. Bye.